He was a very sensuous man. Uh, I don't know that I could get into any detail on that, really. That would be indelicate. <laughs> uh, he was very taken with me. He had his cameraman photograph me in the position of the famous painting, The Age of Innocence. He thought that I resembled that little girl in the oil painting. So it's any, it's, uh, it's anybody's question as to whether he was taken with me really when I was re younger even than 16. Because he was a genius and geniuses do and think odd things as compared to other people, so we'll never know. What was my home life like? Well, I was busy having children. I had one boy each year, and um, so I didn't have much social life. I was, I was really hungry for people my own age. I was pretty much of a kid, you know, at 17. And uh, our company was mainly people like Albert Einstein, very serious, you know. And at 17, I, I just thought the way he looked, he just looked like a dirty old man to me. <laughs> Long hair down onto his shoulders and a dreary, dreamy look out of his eyes. And uh, they didn't have much to say to each other until they got on the subject of music. And of course, they were both very interested in music, Charlie being a, a multifaceted genius in that he played all string instruments and piano and organ by ear, no lessons. It just made me more hungry than ever to have young people, you know, for, for company. And he okayed a party that I was going to give uh, at the Biltmore downtown, he okayed that, said it was all right if I had a bunch of young people. But they just put the phonograph record on and dance and act silly like young people do. And I had taken them back to the house to have a good time. And when Charlie came home, he threw them all out. He was so mad. I felt really broken hearted, you know, that he was so fatherly. He was two people. When he had the tramp outfit on and he felt funny, and he was funny, but as a serious man, he was a very serious man. Yeah, very much so. And a great reader, self-educated, of course, and I think the whole world knows about his early background, poverty and so forth. He had a terrible childhood. And I always thought it was amusing that he had autographed pictures of all the famous people in all walks of life, Gallikirchi, Pavlova and uh, Lord and Lady Louis Mountbatten and all these people. He was, although he was the most famous man probably, he said himself that he was better known than Jesus Christ. And uh, come to find out he was right. There were places in the world that laughed at his humor that had never heard of Jesus Christ. But he, uh, there was something in his childhood that made him a fan of celebrities. I guess he never quite believed that this had all happened to him. I think Charlie's real love was uh, his character that he created, really. And anything that appeared to threaten that would bring out the worst in the man. And um, I think I finally figured out that that was the reason that was, that was his real love. <clears throat> um, after my second boy was born, he seemed to uh, would be a lot warmer and a lot more considerate and so forth. And uh, we had some interesting evenings together, but uh, he didn't talk much about his work at home. And he didn't like anybody to suggest anybody. I had suggested uh, Myrna Kennedy, my little friend, to be the uh, tightrope walker in the circus, which he was going to make later. And he didn't like the idea of me suggesting it, but he pleased me and he had a test of her. And he said, you were right, she's wonderful for the part. She had been uh, a dancer in an act with her brother in vaudeville. And she had a dancer's developed calves and pretty face, very pretty girl. So she turned out to be just perfect for the part. After my divorce from Charlie, which was in uh, 1928, it was final, um, I went to work for Radio Keith Orpheum Volleyball Circuit and each year they picked up 
excuse me, they picked up my option and I ended up uh, working nine years playing all the key cities of this country. And then uh, I went to Europe and I worked in, uh, in the Café de Paris, a very outstanding club where uh, Noel Coward and Gertrude Lawrence and all these people had played. And I finished that tour with playing all the provinces, England's provinces throughout Scotland and England. I decided in 1950, this was some time later, to uh, become an agent. And I was an agent for a couple of years, thinking that maybe my sons would pay the overhead while I got started. <clears throat> As it turned out, my son, Charlie Jr., uh, he couldn't get a job because his father at that time was in disfavor in this country with the administration that we had in, in Washington. And Sidney didn't want any part of films because his father was so famous in it that he decided he wanted the stage. And he had a little group uh, called Circle Theater in Hollywood here where they did, uh, what do you call this type of, of theater? Where they rehearsed two weeks and the next... Repertory, yeah. He had this and of course all the producers, directors, casting people and all came to see them in these plays and they thought so much of Sidney that he got the role opposite Judy Holliday and Bells Are Ringing and won the Tony for it. So his career was well on the way. And of course Charlie Jr. died in 1968. And, uh, he didn't have a chance really to. He had his father's pantomimic ability by the way. Charlie Jr. he was a mimic too, mime. Well, I mellowed over the years, and I don't have anything but, but pleasant memories, I think, now. And the things that aren't so pleasant, I've been able to account for, I think. 